you have to refocus. You're used to dealing with laws and working with the laws. Okay? You got to understand the laws are horrible and they're going to get worse. And that's the inherent weakness in the DUI case. Our, our constitutional rights have been shredded. Uh, the laws are totally unfair, violate due process. You got to work within that system, and that is, that is difficult. But there is a tremendous strength, and this requires you to refocus. The strength is is truth. The strength is science. It's facts. It's the human body. It's the machine. It's the cop. Those are all weaknesses in the prosecution's case. Always will be. But what it requires is, for each of you, you've got to educate yourself. You've got to learn. You've got to learn how this machine works. You've got to learn about physiology, a little bit about biophysics and biochemistry and electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. You've got to learn some of the stuff about infrared spectroscopy. Now, you all went to law school because, you know, you did poorly in science and, and math and so on in college, and I understand that, and that's the problem. But if I can do it, you can do it. And by the way, after, I don't know, God knows how many years, you know, I am still learning. But you've got to put yourself in a position where you're the only person in that courtroom who understands that machine. I guarantee you, or who understands what goes into a field sobriety test or any of a number of other subjects, the blood test. And I guarantee you the judge will not, the prosecutor will not, the police officer for darn sure will not. And if you do, then you're going to run the courtroom. Okay. Your strength are the facts, or the truth, or science. That doesn't change. The human body is not going to change no matter how many laws they pass. The limitations on the breath machine are only going to get more problematic for the prosecution and the cop is never going to change so <clears throat> let's take a look at at the two main points the main factors in the state's case what is the state's case what does it consist of what do they have well they got this breath machine and they got this cop and that's it okay let's take a look at those what is it really that we're dealing with? Let's take the breath machine. As I understand it, North Carolina, you have two tests called duplicate analysis. Most states do. This is a good thing. That duplicate analysis states that the officer is, has three chances to give a test before he has to start a new series. He has to get a second test is within 0.02 percent of the first test. Okay. If the first test, for example, is 0 0.10, what does the second test have to be to be a valid test? It has to be a 0 0.08 or a 0 0.09 or a 0 0.10 or a 0 0.11 or a 0 0.12. Correct? Yeah. Well, let's use that 0 0.10 example. I use it because, first of all, it's a very common result, and secondly, mathematically, it's easy to work with. What are we talking about? This statute, or this law in North Carolina, is designed for what? To make sure you get an accurate result, correct? We want accuracy. We're dealing with proof beyond a reasonable doubt, correct? And what is their standard for accuracy of this machine? range of error of 0 0.04 on a 0 0.10 test. Now, even I can do the math. That's a 40% acceptable range of error. The state of North Carolina, and incidentally the state of California, considers this machine, which is going to be the basis for the conviction of your client on the per se OA charge, as well as instrumental in the DWI charge, they consider it acceptable accuracy if there is a range of error of 40%. Now, I gotta fly back this afternoon on Delta to Los Angeles. I would not fly on that plane if the pilot had a range of error of 
I don't think any of you, I don't think a juror would. And yet, what is the standard of proof? Is 40% range of error proof beyond a reasonable doubt? Hardly. Now it's even worse. The state of North Carolina says, okay, if you have a .10, you got a second shot, and it's going to have to be within 40% range of error. Think you can do it? And lo and behold, the officer comes up with a .15. Not within the range of error. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll give you a second chance. <laughs> and if you can do it the second time within 40%, we'll call it an accurate test. Well, in California, it's a little different. They can give 15 tests if they want, as long as they get two in a row within .02. But it's the same idea. Not only is it a ridiculous range of error, but they're giving you two shots at it. That's not proof beyond a reasonable doubt, and you, may, you should make sure the jury understands what the state considers to be proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So what's I'm saying? <clears throat> Your defense is truth. Your defense is science. It's not the law. Now, I said that there were two prongs to the prosecution's case. The other is the officer. You get the machine or blood. <clears throat> and by the way, there are all kinds of problems with blood. We simply don't have the time at this, in this presentation to get into that. Uh, but the second is the officer. And as the machine becomes less reliable, there's going to be increased reliance by the prosecution on that cop. He becomes more important. He's sort of been overlooked in the past because of the what the prosecution always felt to be these, these marvels of science, these, uh, these breath machines. Well, how, how reliable is he? Rutgers University's Alcohol Behavior Research Laboratory did a study and found that there was absolutely no difference in ability to determine impairment between officers, bartenders, and social drinkers. You and I. Most of you and I. No difference. Surprise, putting them through a one or two day class didn't suddenly make them experts. Professor Sturgeon Cole from Clemson University here in South Carolina. He took videotapes of 21 different individuals performing field sobriety tests. He showed them to 14 experienced DUI patrol officers. The officers found that 46% of the subjects were, quote, too drunk to drive. 46% based on the field sobriety test were too drunk to drive. What they didn't know is none of them had had any alcohol. None of them. So, that's your officer. He doesn't have any special abilities. He doesn't understand a whole lot. 